It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is radio and media and our 14-year heritage of creating radio programming of interest to seniors on radio station WMEL. Joining me today is John Harper, owner and president of AM 1300 WMEL Radio and Kay Kaiser, who is the information specialist for helping seniors of Brevard. Welcome, John. Thank you, Joe. It's a pleasure well, to be with you. It's a pleasure to have you. Folks, generally, John is handling the control booth at the radio station and always telling me when to shut up and when to talk. Today is my turn to turn the tables. Yeah. 14 years. 14 yeah. years. After 14 years. <laughs> yeah. And Kim, welcome, Kay. Thank you. Yeah. You know, uh, John, before we get into all what we're talking about on radio, I would like for people to know a little bit more about your background and your experience in radio and why you think radio can, can contribute to seniors because seniors still listen to radio. Well, uh, not only seniors, but uh, uh, kids uh, of all ages, uh, whether it be uh, uh, 6 to uh, 96 or something like that as the song once uh, went. But uh, I've been in the broadcasting industry. This is my 50th year, so I guess I'm a senior of, uh, of broadcasting and uh, been around quite some time. And uh, when I started in the industry of talk radio back in 1972 in Miami, that's where I started in talk radio, there were, to give you an example of how the talk radio uh, explosion has occurred over the years, when I started there were five radio stations in the country doing talk radio. Now there's over 1,500 radio stations in the country doing talk radio. Back in those days, demographically, uh, talk radio wasn't considered to be very appealing because it appealed to listeners 35 years of age and above. And now, of course, that's a very key target demographic uh, for not only 35 and above, but 45, 55, 65 plus in demographics. So talk radio has come a long way, and uh, I'm delighted to have uh, the opportunity to say I have played over the years uh, a role, perhaps, in developing some <clears throat> things associated with talk radio. There have been many individuals that I've started over the years as well in talk radio, and uh, I'll, I'll share a, a, a moment here, a, a quick story. One of them was an individual, a, when, I, when I was running a WXYZ radio in Detroit, uh, we had an individual on the air with us who did shtick on our morning show. And uh, he wanted to do something more than just voices and things like that. So he asked me once, uh, can I try doing comedy on the radio? <clears throat> and I was very open to that. And in Detroit, when we tried out new shows, um, being a major market, we would put them on Sunday night, Monday morning, right after Religion on the Line. So this particular individual started doing his uh, comedy talk show uh, 12 midnight to 1 a.m. Sunday night, Monday morning. A couple of weeks later, he called me on a Sunday afternoon. He said, John, can we agree to disagree? I just don't think this is working. So I said, sure, no problem. And uh, he ended uh, his talk show. But s since we were owned by ABC Radio and television, uh, this individual went downstairs where we had WXYZ TV and started uh, hosting for a very popular morning show called Kelly and Company. Every market had a Kelly and Company or some type of a company going on back in those days. And make the long story short, the people in New York who made decisions on television programs for ABC television liked what they saw, brought him in. He did a pitch for them in New York. And uh, a year later, 
He was the host of his own TV show for several years on ABC television and has gone on to big fame and acclaim. And uh, people know him now as Tim Allen, the Tool Time Man. And wow. he started uh, with us in Detroit. Wow, that's really something. <laughs> anyway, think about it. But you know, I go back and I think about my own association with you. Yeah, you and I go way back. Uh, we go 21 years, we figured that's right. out. That's right. And when I first started, folks, when I first started the Alzheimer's program, I knew we had a challenge raising money. It's just like we have a challenge with helping seniors. <clears throat> the challenge here is advocating, informing, and educating. And radio is going to play a great, great part in it. But you did the same thing with me 21 years ago when I, uh, John had just started the radio station, right? That's right. And we used to sell tickets for the car drawing for the Alzheimer's Foundation from John's uh, radio shows over to hotels with a, a financial planner at the time, Norm Hayden, Norm still Hayden, around. Still around here in yeah. the market. Norm yeah. is a good guy. In fact, Norm was my very first talk show host on WMEL radio. Yeah, but that was before I did my, I started my radio right. show. So then we <laughs> marched back into 2000. It was December 7th, and I did my first radio show with, with John. And shortly thereafter, I had an offer of a contract from Talk One Radio in Los Angeles, and they wanted me to do a three-hour daily, five-day week sh show on seniors. Ironically, folks, John putting me on the air, we were the third radio show in over 11,000 in the United States that address senior issues. You might be the uh, Lone Ranger, the only one doing this here in the nation, but you're serving a very valuable purpose, a very important purpose in getting that information out for seniors. There's no other type of outlet than what you do on a weekly basis here on WMEL Radio. That's right. And by putting what we're going to talk about on, on, on the television, we hope that this will translate into more people listening to radio station WMEL AM 1300 every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. But you can listen to WMEL because you have a whole host of other programs. And one I like particularly is a guy named Dave Ramsey. Dave mm -hmm. Ramsey is great. Uh, yeah, Dave is with us Monday through Friday from uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. He follows your show. Yeah. And he's on from 2 until 5, Monday through Friday, every afternoon, and does an outstanding show. Dave Ramsey, very, very popular. And uh, a lot of people really uh, follow him uh, uh, with uh, great interest, and uh, he really gives out great advice. Do you know why I like Dave Ramsey? I like Dave Ramsey because he makes no secret of telling a listener to his show, if you don't do what he thinks you should do about smart handling of your money, he says you're stupid. <laughs> and he calls more people stupid. And he's verified in saying that because why, like he uses an example of going out and putting a steak meal on a credit card. He says, why do you want to pay for a steak meal over a 30 year period? It's yeah. smart. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. You bring you John's got radio, but you have television experience, and you have and radio too. John and I go back to where he had um, the previous station. I was Kay was uh, one of our talk show hosts on the weekends, who did mm -hmm. a health and nutrition talk show. Oh, on uh, Saturday mm -hmm. afternoons. Right. So that, and that was about twenty years ago. Oh gosh, <laughs> it wasn't that, that long ago, was it? <laughs> It was. Not quite. Okay, we won't go there. But nonetheless, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because somebody I had met when I first moved to Florida, we got talking and he said, what have you done? And I told him a television production and all that. And he says, I've got somebody for you to meet. And he introduced me to John. He's one of your salespeople yeah. at the time. And so we just, we hit it off and the rest was history. I was working full time and then developing the, the program on the air each week. But all of this is mm -hmm. important <clears throat> to our topic of our show today, helping seniors. Yes. Because what radio can bring to it, what the printed media can bring to it, what you both bring to it through your experience with television, radio, and the printed media, it just uh, enhance our ability 
to get good information out to people so they can access more programs of interest and need to senior. But I think the biggest challenge <coughs> that, that we have, and I say that, John, because you're the vice president of the organization, and the two of us probably have a better handle on what's going on than most of the others, but seniors just seem to take a back seat in voicing their own opinion. And I say that because here we've advocated for a number of years in Broward County to, to increase a half cent tail sales tax for, uh, for children. Mm -hmm. I took a look at my tax bill, 44.6% of my taxes go to senior programs. And there's not, there's a big goose egg on there for seniors. I'm not saying that seniors should get the same amount as children. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that we need to recognize in, in the country in which we live today that there are many needs out there that need to have a better look taken at them. And if seniors don't start fighting for themselves, and I don't care at what age we are, if we don't fight for ourselves, we're gonna simply get walked on over or walked on by. Mm -hmm. Well, Joe, that's why I feel it's so important with what you're doing weekly on the radio program here on WMEL Talk Radio, uh, Thursdays at one o'clock, uh, when you're bringing many of those issues to the front and center with seniors who may not be aware of many of these issues, how it affects them, and also you involve their, their kids, their grandkids, uh, to make them aware of what could or could not be affecting their grandparents as well. So it's important, nobody else um, as far as I know, here in the state of Florida is doing this type of a show that uh, you do on a weekly basis, along with this TV show, too. Well, that's why we're trying to broaden our horizon. And just, just recently, um, Eastern College, uh, former BCC, has given us the rights to all the old TV shows that I did for them for seven years which we're able to be able to rebrand those shows and add a whole new 300 television shows to our rapidly expanding network so that people have a better idea on resources that are available mm -hmm. and how to access. So, Kay, you are the information specialist. And, and, and if somebody says information specialist, what does that mean? You're not, you're not uh, well, you are a source for information, but Yes. Tell, tell our listeners why it's important what you do to tell the overall cause of our program. Okay. Well, first of all, they're going to get a live voice. They're not going to have to go through a lot of prompts to get to the solution. Um, I find that I more or less try to help develop a relationship with the caller that I have online. Because often it's many issues. They may be thinking of one initially, but in developing a conversation with them, they, it branches out to some other needs. So it's a personal approach I take, and I'm having worked in the senior market for a number of years and, and taking the time to listen. Sometimes it can be just as simple, I'm lonely. They might want somebody just plain to talk to because they're, they're living alone. They don't have anybody even come or no family around, and I'm going to take that time. But... Um, I have built such a large, and it's continuing to grow every day, my resources, so that I tell them if I can't find the answer today, I will dig in and find it for you. And they truly appreciate that. So they know that they're, they have, by calling Helping Seniors of Brevard, a, an organization <coughs> that truly cares and is making a difference. And the compliments and the testimonials are expanding. Yeah, I think that's important, but it, I think that's something that um, that viewers need to be aware of is the fact that uh, talk radio, especially WMEL, mm -hmm. is a local talk radio station, mm -hmm. which sets it uh, far and apart from uh, other shows. Well, like some of your competitors, your local competitors. Uh, well, we're owned. locally owned and operated, yeah. Pardon? We're locally owned and operated. You're locally owned and operated, and you can put on 
your station the programs you want to put on. You have a lot of local talent. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, the nutrition guy. Uh, Tom Sokoloff. Yeah, Tom Sokoloff. From but he's on Health. every day, and yep. he, he goes all over the country And now. Tom Sokoloff is now nationwide, originating yeah. from our studios, yeah. But wow. it's the type of information, uh, a local show, you've been able to champion us when I was over at the Alzheimer's Foundation. You're doing the same thing with helping seniors now. You realize from your time in radio the importance of good information. Information is information is information. Some information is much better suited for broadcasting than other information. Well, it's got to be relevant. Yes. Relevant is yes. important. Yeah. You can give out just a lot of uh, uh, dribble and uh, it means nothing, but the type of information that you present each week on your talk show is relevant to the senior market. It's relevant to the children of those seniors as well. Um, you had Bill Johnson on as a guest, an elder law attorney just uh, recently, and he talked about many issues that uh, many seniors may not be aware of, and also their children would not be aware. And the information was priceless and very helpful, and, and that's the type of thing you do on a weekly basis. I'm, a, I'm amazed often, John, with some of the panelists I have on, and what just happened during our recent filming with uh, the Space Coast Center for Independent Living. They are doing things here at the Space Coast Center for Independent Living that I was not aware of, and I have been, I've known about that organization for 20 years. But I was amazed at some of the things they're doing with uh, technology, with uh, hearing impaired people. Uh, too often we think that there's just the uh, Association for the Deaf and the Association for the Blind. But there are other programs that if we did a better job of informing, and that's why I think local talk radio is very appropriate because we can adjust. Sure, we can move on a dime. Yes. And, mm -hmm. uh, and make the information relevant uh, to our audience, no matter what that audience may be. As a radio person, I, you know, there's a book called The Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire. But there's also a thing I call about the, the rise and the fall of the local newspaper. And I am very, very fearful that uh, more of our local newspapers <coughs> are going to decline to the point where they can't be published because of expense, because they make their money through advertising, as does radio. But do you think I'm being pessimistic and, 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 and worrying about our ability to project information in the future? Uh, whether it be through the newspapers, television, or in my case, radio, um, I don't uh, look at it as a lot of gloom and doom. Uh, first of all, newspapers are starting to, uh, many of them have hit bottom and are starting to resurface uh, okay. using one of your submarine terms yeah. uh, and uh, uh, I think newspapers will still be around uh, obviously the landscape for the newspaper business has changed and uh, I can't really talk uh, firsthand about the industry however I'm a big believer in newspapers and I read uh, every day in our trade magazines about readership and advertising in newspapers is coming back up. They've had to go through some bumpy, some rough times yep. and fasten their seatbelt, but I think they're, they're starting to come back. Will it ever be like it was back in the go-go days of the 50s, 40s, 60s, 70s, or 80s? No, it won't, but at the same time, there will always be a place for newspapers. Television is retooling in many respects, trying to do more cost-efficient programming uh, that can help them survive in the long run. And television is doing well. Of course, cable uh, has had a major impact upon listeners, or I should say on viewership of uh, over-the-air television. Um, the internet has had a big impact as well. And radio, too. I'm happy to say that overall the radio industry is, um, we're doing as well as we've done ever in years gone by. The listenership to radio, in addition to all of the other mediums, we're still there. 
and uh, I'm very pleased about that. Now that's not only talk radio, but that's also the other the other music formats as yes. well. But uh, radio is doing well. Advertising levels, despite all of the competition that we have uh, for advertising dollars, the radio industry is still there. Um, the internet has, however, uh, played a major factor in our having to retool certain things the way we do uh, compared to old days. But at the same time, it's forced us to be more competitive and um, listen more to what our listeners are saying and asking for. So overall, it's been a good thing. And I try to make a friend out of change and, and therefore uh, well, we're moving forward. Yeah, just think about what you're just saying. Um, our ability to do a talk radio show and within either later that same day or the next day, you've got it to Kerry Fink, our media guy. He puts it on, on the internet. You got it's on uh, I, I I think I'm correct in saying worldwide YouTube. Oh yeah. yeah. And you know, people can pick that radio show up, they can pick these television shows up, they can look at our website and and we have a whole new Facebook page. But but the the intermingling of radio, television, newspaper, hometown news, senior scene magazine, all these things we're involved in, they promote our sponsors, but more importantly, they enable us to reach a broader audience with information that is so necessary for seniors to live cost effectively. Well, uh, very true, Joe. That's a great point, and the smart advertiser, the smart person doing a talk show, putting a talk show together, whether it be on radio or television, not only is going to utilize radio as one of the mediums, but they're going to recognize the fact that um, the Senior Scene magazine can be very helpful as an additional tool of getting the word out. Obviously, Bright House Bright House Television is very effective in helping to get the word out. Mm -hmm. So combining different types of uh, media is the best way to go. And I always applaud uh, an advertiser or a talk show that uh, wants to do that very thing. That's the smart way to go. Well, those, I think one of the smartest things I've done since I retired from the Navy was to meet and hook up with you <laughs> and have you sort of force me in a nice way into doing some things that I had never done before. And then when the opportunity for television came along, um, I feel good about doing what we do because I think it's for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that I've always felt about your radio station, that you contributed to the good of the community. And that's why I always ask people to sponsor programs at WML. I, 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 I feel good about it. I, I don't feel like I'm promoting monetarily. I don't feel that. I feel like I'm promoting because it's a good, right thing to do. Okay, you're, uh, you, you, you've, you've admitted that you've been in television, radio, and you've done all this. Mm -hmm. You've heard John and me talk. Mm -hmm. What would Kay Kaiser Information Specialist add to what we're talking about today? Well, I believe what you both have said is absolutely correct. You know, we're expanding. We're, we're doing everything that we can in our power to get the information out to our population and seniors and their caretakers in Brevard County. And it's just <coughs> amazing because... There are other ways people can look at, well, I'm going to do this or do that. But then when they call us, they say, you're so different. You are absolutely different, and you're doing such a good cause. Yes, I think that, that makes a big difference. But there's also something else that, uh, that WML does that it's of particular importance to seniors, and that is uh, your programming. Uh, the Hurricane Hunters oh, yes. and the... Uh, and all the space shots. People come from all over the world, John, to uh, watch that darn thing lift off that, 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 that uh, site out there. But you're always on top of that. You're always there with the coverage. Uh, and you do all these things. You help people when, uh, uh, I know when everybody else is leaving, you were still at the radio station with the Hurricane Hunters. These are all important things. 
these are things that affect a lot of seniors, but these are also things that seniors like to keep up with, the shuttle shots, where hurricanes are going, what's happening in the world. And that's what a local talk radio station does, and effectively. I, absolutely, and, and I believe so strongly, Joe, in combining the best of our local programming with national programming. You mentioned um, all of the rocket launches. Uh, when we uh, uh, did the uh, first launch that uh, NASA had for the Orion spacecraft, uh, we were there for that and uh, presenting the information for everybody to, to hear. We had hundreds of phone calls of people calling up and thanking us for our coverage of that. When we had the hurricanes, I believe, if my mind serves me, about 11 years ago now, mm -hmm. that hit our area. We were the only radio station to stay on the air with hurricane coverage 24 hours a day, seven days a week for an entire week. Right. And we gave up uh, all of our advertising to present the information and to take calls and to help people when they were in a very desperate time of need. And uh, we're very grateful for that opportunity. Every now and then I'll still go somewhere and uh, someone will come up to me and say, you saved my life. And I kind of turn around like, what are you talking about? But they're referring to the fact that we were a voice in the night. We were a voice who was there during the hurricanes, and I'm very proud and very happy of that. That's a very special moment. A lot of people don't think about what it takes to do those things. You mentioned something. You had to give up part of your revenue in order to help people. Talk radio can do that. Syndicated radio wouldn't do that. As a vice president of Helping Seniors, what makes you feel good and you got about 40 seconds. What makes you feel good about being a vice president of Helping Seniors, and what do you think we're going to be able to do to help seniors, and why it's important? Well, we're associated on the board of directors with a, with a great board uh, led by you, Joe Steckler, and uh, we're, we're pleased and delighted about that. But I think what the organization can do in the future as we move forward is to make more of those contacts with seniors who are in need. Mm -hmm. Kay Kaiser mentioned uh, some of the people that she's helped in the past, and we hope to reach out and make people more aware of what we do, how we do it, and uh, to develop uh, those types of contacts to help seniors in need in Brevard County. Just remember the words, Senior Advocacy 2015. Yes. Senior advocacy. Yes. John, I want to thank you for being on the show today. Thank and you, thank Joe. you, Kay, for being thank here. You. And I want to thank you, viewers, for watching today's episode of Helping Seniors. If you have questions or comments, please call us at 321 473 7770. For more information on senior care and resources, visit our website at helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Be sure to listen to Helping Seniors on radio station AM 1300 every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. And look for our Helping Seniors newsletter in our center section of Senior Scene Magazine each month. I'm Joe Steckler, and thank you for joining us today for Helping Seniors. <laughs>